Let's take a look at Brad Pitt and figure out if he's had any potential facial plastic surgeries. Stay tuned for the side-by-side -side comparison over the years and the total estimated cost of the plastic surgery procedures that he may have had. In 1988, at the age of 25, Brad has horizontal eyebrows that have less of a peak than we find in women, which is normal. He has infraorbital hollowing. He has a narrow nasal bridge, slight nasal tip bulbosity, and mild ailer flaring. Brad has a short philtrum and good lip volume. He also has a strong chin and a boxy jawline with strong masseter muscles, and that is a very masculine type of trait. To the analysis board! So you can see the juxtaposition here for Brad with a relatively short philtrum here. Um, he has nice full lips and those are slightly more feminine traits. But then he also has this uh, strong masseter muscle there and the jawline is very well defined. So those are more masculine types of traits. Another interesting juxtaposition with Brad's face is you have this prominent brow ridge here, right? But then you have a relatively smooth profile to the nose and he has this little super tip break right here. And there's a rotation to his nose with a more obtuse nasolabial angle right here, which are slightly more feminine traits. So it's this masculine and feminine sort of blend that gives him a really unique look. In 1992, at the age of 29, you can see that Brad has a great beard. The mustache connects to the cheek hair with very good density. In 1993, at the age of 30, there are no additional changes. In 1994, age 31, he has visible upper tooth show on repose when he just parts his lips. And you can watch our video on what models have in common to see how prevalent this is in the celebrity and model community. In 1995, at the age of 32, I see no additional changes and this is the same through 1999. In the year 2000 at the age of 37 Brad has these forehead righted or wrinkles that are becoming more etched in. He also has no signs of any obvious procedures at this point. And in 2001, I see no additional changes, and that's the same through 2003. In 2004, at the age of 41, Brad has a juvenile hairline. It's amazing how anterior the temples seem to be. And this is either incredibly strong genetics that are quite favorable as far as male pattern loss, or that he's on finasteride or both might be true. And for affordable finasteride and oral minoxidil, check out signup.feelconfident.com for our upcoming products. In 2005, I see no additional changes to the analysis board. You can see here that the frontotemporal corners have started to recede slightly right in through here. And the forehead wrinkles are much more etched in than they used to be. And his eyebrows here are more totic, they've gotten heavier here, and there's some signs of dermatocolasis, which is excess upper eyelid skin. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be the first one to see our new content. I always do my best to engage with early comments. In 2007, at the age of 44, I see no change. And in 2008, age 45, you can see that Brad has what appears to be some additional facial weight gain. In 2009, at the age of 46, I see no additional changes. And same for 2010. Two the analysis board. In this side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that the cheeks have gotten much fuller over time. So when you compare the volume in here and in here compared to how it used to be, you can really appreciate those changes. He used to have a fairly flat mid-face, and now that mid-face has been enhanced with what looks to me like potential filler. Now this is where I think Brad may have gotten a brow lift. And there are different surgical approaches to brow lifting, which we've covered in a previous video. But just to summarize, there is a direct approach where the incision is actually made right along the brow and a portion of tissue is removed to allow this brow to lift up. That, of course, leaves you with a visible scar right there and it can sometimes create some alopecia to the eyebrow hairs. So that's often not favored until maybe much older in life where you have very strong wrinkles and maybe you care a little bit less about the scarring. 
I highly doubt that Brad had that procedure. Another approach is the mid forehead approach. So that's using one of these wrinkles here to create an incision and to come in and lift the brow up that way and to usually remove some degree of skin as well. Another approach is the coronal approach, which is a bit more old school, but that's where an incision was made all the way back here, way behind the hairline and everything brought up. That again is unlikely the type of surgery that he had. The more common surgeries these days for brow lifting are lateral approach or temporal brow lift where incisions are made in here and in here behind the hairline but only laterally and that allows you to come in through here usually with endoscopes but not always with endoscopes and lift the lateral portion of the brow up this way. So that is a common approach to modern day brow lifting and another one is with again just an endoscopic approach but maybe not always just lateral so you can do uh, like a multi-port approach with endoscopes and come in and control the whole forehead down to the brows using an endoscopic type of approach and lastly another potential option for brow lifting is called uh, pretracheal which the incision is then right here at the front uh, we sometimes will combine that with lowering the hairline but again this is um, not likely what Brad had done I would guess either a lateral temporal approach or an endoscopic approach would have been the most uh, likely possibilities for his potential brow lift. In 2014, at the age of 51, I see no additional change. In 2015, age 52, what I wanted to highlight here is that Brad has good skin care, possibly gets laser resurfacing or chemical peels. He had some early scarring that I saw in his 20s, 30s that now appears to be gone. Maybe that was just some acne scarring that was ultimately resurfaced and improved. He also is starting to have increased neck skin laxity. I mean, he is 52 after all at this stage in 2016 at the age of 53 you can see that the brow lift effects have started to diminish now three years later in 2017 age 54 it looks to me like brad may have had partial dissolving of his cheek filler the cheeks to me especially you know that whole mid face looks a lot flatter closer to how it looked much earlier in life in 2018 at the age of 55 i see no additional change in 2019 at the age of 56 it looks to me like the cheek filler may be back and in 2020 age 57 i see no additional change and that's the same through 2022 now in june of 2022 brad appeared on the gq cover and people had questions part of the shock is that we haven't seen him without facial hair in recent years and also i think there was airbrushing of his skin especially under the eyes and that makes him look more wax like and less like a 59 year old man and also when brad lays on his back here it reduces the effects of gravity and that changes brad's facial appearance from how we're used to normally seeing him in 2023 it looks to me like brad may have started to introduce botox primarily to his forehead to lessen the lines and the total cost of these potential procedures is eighty thousand dollars and here's a before and after since you like this video on brad pitt check out our video on tom cruise and his potential facial plastic surgeries